today we're taking tackling the uh, the deck boards for the lower section of our deck. This is just a, a, a ground level platform. Um, in the terms of this city, anything that's less than 24 inches is a ground level platform. There's no building code for it. Uh, they just want to make sure that it's uh, uh, not going to fall apart, which is our goal as well. So they're very happy with what we have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our five quarter pressure treated lumber by six. This is the dimensional lumber we're going to use. Uh, you have the option to use uh, two by six or two by eights if you really choose to. The reason we're going with this lumber is A, it's economical. B, we're using our camo screw system. And so we're going to be coming in from the sides. Uh, we're every 16 inches on center. This is more than strong enough. Uh, we're not going to have any issues with it feeling too lightweight or too much movement. We've uh, added some structural support underneath the deck to keep the floor joists from moving around and transfer some load so it'll feel really stable. The blocking we've got in place here is because we're going to picture frame our deck. Okay, so we're going to have our deck board overhang and I need wood underneath here so I can attach my camo screws. Um, not so much for the picture frame, but doing a fish bone. So these deck boards will be on an angle. You, know, you can't finish a deck like this, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to here, we'll screw at these two points, and then when it's all finished, we'll take our saw and we'll cut our line, and then we'll add this board on as a cap, so that when you're looking at the deck, all you'll see is the skirt board, the finished edge of this board, and you won't see any cuts. That'll give it a clean, nice look. We'll be able to give it a quick sand before we put the cap on, and then we won't have any splinters for people in the bare foot. So when you're working like this and you're gonna do a fishbone plus picture frame, two things you need to know. One, when you frame something, no matter how square you make it, after the drying process, it is not square. It'll be close. The wood we're putting on won't be square. It'll be close. So if you cut all your lumber in advance and put 45 degree angles, and you measure off your marked 45 degree line, you'll find is that over time, when, when you get to the end, all of these angles, they're not gonna be perfectly lined up. They're gonna have different spacing. You're not gonna make it perfect. So the only way to do this and have perfect cuts is to lay the boards first and then cut after the fact. So what we're doing is we've measured off four and a quarter inches, which is um, significantly less than the board so that I have a nice over overhang. And you can see this middle board here, it's two by six, but it's pretty much the same dimension as the, sp you know, the spine of the fish bone. So our board is gonna go like this down the middle. All right, and this is so that all of the cutoff ends have something to, to rest on. So what we're gonna do is, Nate's gonna help me put this position. I've marked this corner right here so that when I'm finished, that'll be my cut. It'll look like a perfect 45. And the next board will come right off of this corner and that'll look really nice. We don't want to start here where we're cutting in two different directions. So it'll just look like it wasn't very well thought out. And Nate, I want you to take the same corner on your edge and slide it over to the edge of the ridge board. Okay. Now that is not 45 degrees. 42, 41, doesn't really matter. Because at the end of the day, when we do all of our cuts, it'll look beautiful, it'll be intentional, the spacing will be nice. And that is the look we're going for. So we are going to take our camo screws. And remember, we're going to be cutting pieces off. There's no sense putting a screw where it's going to get cut off. So we'll put in our camo screw system. Remember, this is going in on an angle. If I start too close to this board here, I'll actually come and I'll miss it on, on the underside. So go towards the lead edge of the, of the board so you know you're going to get lots of good contact there. And you're a little bit away from where the saw cut's going to be. And you drive that drill bit right into the cradle. And that sets the perfect depth every time. Now move the gun up a few inches because now I'm trying to hit the same joist but from the other side. All right, so we're going to slide down here. Same thing, set that up so you'll get good contact. Set the screw, drive until you hit the ridge on the bit. Readjust. Now this moves relatively quickly for something that's as complicated as this. 
you'll see that this is not as fast as doing surface screws. The advantage to this type of system, look at where the hole is, just underneath the rounded edge of the board. This is where it gets fun. Um, where do you want me to line it up? Now. Just with that? Yeah, you see this one? This one has to be on that pencil line, four and a quarter, mm -hmm. right? So what we're gonna do from now on is we're gonna set these boards with that touching the edge of that rim joist. Every so we'll, we'll have we'll, gu we'll guarantee ourselves a nice cutoff everywhere we go. So the next piece is gonna be the exact same, but like that. You got it. So we talked about this before, that the gun itself now becomes the spacer. That's the gap that goes between every board. So we set that in. Okay, so when I set the screw on an angle, generally when you screw things on an angle, it has a, a pulling force. But because you have a spacer, there's nowhere for it to pull to. It'll just drive straight down, guarantee that space. You drive that back in this side. Guaranteed to be perfect every time. <laughs> Compared to other systems that have no screws on the surface, it's incredibly fast. Traditionally, you had to put in brackets attached to the joist, crawl underneath, screw from underneath. It was really time consuming and a real pain in the butt. This is uh, really fast as far as a screwless system. As far as just getting the deck board down, it'll run you twice as long as traditional screws. Um, if you're one of those guys that likes to just use an air nailer on a compressor, that's obviously the fastest way to deck it, put decking on, but not very pretty. This is amazing. Now, as far as performance, this will outperform any screw or nail on the market. It'll help your wood last twice as long. I think that's conservative estimate. And so, for that reason alone, it's worth the extra time. If your wood lasts twice as long and it takes 50% as long to put the boards on, you're way ahead because you don't have to rebuild the deck again in 20 years. In terms of functionality, this allows you to have the peace of mind to be out barefoot on your deck. It's one of the benefits of uh, composite decking is the fact that you felt comfortable to go barefoot. The trick with composite decking is in a lot of cases, it gets so hot that you can't go barefoot on it anyway. So then the benefit that you achieve is lost in the fact that it's too hot. Where wood stays cool, so you can be barefoot, knowing that where you put your screws isn't causing splinters and excessive wear. And for that reason, I prefer to go wood and camo. Plus, you have a lot more flexibility with wood than you do with composite, and the price is always perfect. Ah, uh, you're like, go get the camera screws. I'm like, I can't find them. <laughs> they're camouflaged. Because they're camouflaged. <laughs> So in this situation, the board needs a little bit of help to sit where it wants to, needs to go. So the best way to do it is put this screw through a two by four, directly underneath the lead edge. And then with a moderate amount of pressure, you can push that board back and forth, okay? And this is gonna be reused. You can pull the screw out and set it up over and over and over again. So Nate, I'm just gonna get you to kind of hold that board in place for me as I'm coming across here. That'll keep my gap nice and consistent. Again, if you're working alone, it's something you can do on yourself. All you do is get in a position where you like it, throw a second screw in, and then you're good to go. So what do you think about working with the camo system? It's uh, easy. Yeah? Especially for a guy who's my age and uh, <laughs> And I've only been doing this for like a year. You're like a junior, junior carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> junior the third. <laughs> if you're enjoying these videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, but most importantly, comment on the videos. By all means, or a suggestion of video you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to be in touch.